So horizontal circles continued. Example one. Thank you. A car is approaching a circular turn that has a radius of 60 meters. If the coefficient of friction between the car and the pavement is 0.45, what's the maximum speed that the car can safely travel through the turn? Let's draw a little free body diagram. What we're going to do is we're going to do a front view. Here's the car. We're looking straight at the car as it's coming towards us for a split second as it's going around the corner. What are the forces acting on this car? Get the obvious ones. Is the car sinking into the ground? Yeah, just. Yep, absolutely. Now, it's also going around a corner. Let's assume that the corner it's traveling is in this direction here. So. If you're going around a corner, there has to be a force pushing you towards the center. What force pushes you around a corner? Friction does. Now you'll notice FC has not appeared on my free body diagram. Centripetal force has not appeared on my free body diagram. There's two equations here. The first is that at normal force equals mg. I'm not going to write that equation. I'm more interested in the going around in a circle, and we're going in a circle. So if I go winner minus loser, no loser, winner, friction is the centripetal force. Friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know the force same size as the normal force in this case. What? Okay, so this side is going to be mu mg, and this is going to be m uh, ac. Which ac am I going to use? The one with the period or the one with the speed in it? Well, look at the question and ask either what they told me or what they want me to find. That's your clue. Which one am I going to use? Which one is the one with the speed in it? V squared over R. Oh, I noticed something kind of cool. Turns out it doesn't matter whether you're a VW bug or a big semi truck. And they want to know the speed, which I think Tyson is V. I can get that by itself. I think the safe speed to go around this corner is going to be mu g r square rooted. It's going to be 0.45 times 9.8 times 60. Square root of that. How fast can we go around a circle? What did you get, Brandon? I think it's in the 16s. 16 point, 16 point two, or three? Which way rounded off properly? 16.3 meters per second. About 30 miles an hour, or times by three points, about 50 kilometers per hour. So this, this would be enough. You could do this as a corner, a nice gentle corner on a road, and people would have to slow down. Now you'd probably build a safety margin in because you'd also have to think, what if it's raining? But the speed limit would probably be posted as 40, 35, something like that. And that's where they get the speed limit numbers for the uh, corners. Except in most corners, they're not flat. If you're going at any speed, what do they do with the corner? They tend to bank it. And we'll talk about why maybe later on. Example two. A test tube rotates with a period of 9.9 .9 times 10 to negative 4 seconds. What's the centripetal force on a 1.8 times 10 to negative 9 kilogram amoeba at the bottom of the test tube? The bottom of the test tube rotates in a circle with radius 0.15 meters. 
Cool. So let's suppose the test tube is right there. What are the forces acting on it? Well, Spencer, gravity would be into the page, or if we wanted to, gravity down, a normal force up. I really don't care about those. Even though the test tube is at an angle, that's not that big an issue because the circle is flat. I know, I know it's so that when it comes right down to it, my net force is that way. That's the applied force. What force is pushing this test tube in a circle? Well, uh, the, the, sorry, this amoeba in a circle? The test tube itself is. The test tube is pushing against it. We'll call it F apply. I don't want to call it a normal force because the test tube is at an angle, and usually I like my normal force to be 90 degrees to the surface cast it. Who cares? Here's what I do know. This is FC. And that's what the question wants me to find. I know that the applied force is what's moving it in a circle. The applied force, which is the centripetal force, is going to be mass times acceleration. Which acceleration equation will I use? The one with the velocity or the one with the period in it? Oh, 4 pi squared r over t squared. Mass, oh, there it is, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 9 times 4 times pi squared times radius is 0.15. I'd like all of you to try this one because some of you might not be able to go pi squared. You might get an error. You might need to type that in a different way, but you need to find that out on your calculator now. And the period is 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 4 squared. So all of you try this one on your calculator just to see. Would yours be? Oh, pray tell. <laughs> you guys get that, or am I wrong? I got point zero <laughs> one zero eight seven five five nine seven one. one. Uh, one point zero nine times ten to the negative one two newtons. Yeah. Just because the test tube itself is at an angle, who cares? The amoeba is going in a horizontal circle. I know my overall combined net force is my FC, and I can figure it out. <clears throat> Example three. An empty swing on an amusement park ride has a mass of 10 kilograms. If the swing has a kinetic energy of 460 joules, what is the centripetal force on the swing? They want me to find in this question, and that's either going to be or depending on whether I know the period or the speed. Did they give me the mass, by the way? Okay, so I'm good there. What else did they give me, Justin? What type of energy? What does that help me figure out? Did you say V? <gasps> That's going to help me figure out the speed. Okay. 
So we're going to use this one, not that one. And I'm going to write down Ke equals a half mv squared. And I'm going to get the v by itself. I think v is going to be 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass square rooted. Ah, you know what? Let's get clever for a second. Look at my original equation. What's sitting right there? Can you read it to me, Andrew? No, not quite. What? 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 But you know what? I'm going to do this. And I'm just going to put this thing... Oh, boy. That didn't draw right. I'm just going to put this right in there. Why not? I'm just curious to... You can plug in the numbers, and Shannon, you'll be fine. But I'm just curious to see what happens algebraically. I, I've been on these rides before. Have you? The craziest way? I'm curious what's going on. So I'm going to get this. The centripetal force, Fc, is equal to m over r, and then v squared is 2ke over m. What do you notice? Masses cancel. I, by the way, I've been on the wave rider or the wave swinger before, and I noticed that the empty cars don't go swinging way, way out or way, way in. They're pretty much right in front of me. They swing out a tiny bit further because I think I present bigger air resistance than the empty car, and we're back in our actual physics world. But for all intents and purposes, if we're ignoring air resistance, masses cancel. I think one of your questions in the homework asked you, hey, if you're on the amusement park ride with swings, will the swings swing out if they're empty further, the same, or inwards? I'm pretty sure the answer is the same. Now I'm going to crunch the numbers. 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the radius. Uh, it, oh, in the diagram, 7. What's the force that this particular empty car experiences? You get 131, 131 newtons? <clears throat> Again, Krissa, you didn't have to do this algebraic substitution, but I suddenly saw there was a v squared sitting there and a v squared sitting there, and I thought, good gosh, why don't I substitute for in for v squared because I won't have to do the square root. Nice. A few more. Road safety. A 1,450 kilogram car can travel without slipping at a maximum speed of 32 meters per second in a circular path of radius 72 on a dry horizontal surface. When it rains, the coefficient of friction is reduced to one half of its original value. What's the maximum safe speed of the car under this wet condition? <clears throat> hmm. Let's do a uh, dry run and then a rain run. I think the free body diagram is going to be the same for both. So let's do my little free body diagram right here. We're looking straight at the car. What are the forces acting on it? I'm pretty sure gravity down, normal force up. And what force pushes a car into a circle? If you're horizontal, it's friction. In fact, I think, Nav, that friction equals... FC.
Friction is what times what, Brandon? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force. Size is the normal force. I'm going to get mu mg equals m. Brandon, do you think I want to use the equation with a v in it or with the period in it? Because they gave me a speed. So I'll use the v squared over r. Conveniently, again, the mass cancels. What do you think I really want to find here, by the way? I think I need to find mu, and then I can, when it says reduces to one half of the value, I'll just divide it by two now and move into the rainy section. Now I have all the values that I need. Now, how would I get the mu by itself? How would I get this? What's the? By? Divide by g, right? Mu is going to be v squared over grr. For them to take this particular corner at this particular speed, this is how much traction there has to be. Uh, 32 squared divided by 9.8 times 72. Hopefully this is a reasonable number. Ah, this is what happens when I make numbers up, because we're getting an answer bigger than one. Well, let's go with it for now. We're getting 1.45. Okay. You need dragster tires or, or spikes or studs or chains or something, apparently. Sorry. Uh, what are the units, by the way, from you? Oh, yeah, there are none, right? It's a unitless measurement. Let's go to the rain now. Apparently, in the rain, we lose half of our traction. So in the rain, I'll call it mu r for rain. It's going to be 1.45 over 2. And I'll use the value on my calculator. I get a 0 0.73, 0.72. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll carry it to four sig figs, 0.7256 because that's not my final answer, so why round off here? What do they want me to find when it's raining, though? Sorry? V. Okay, it's going to be the same equation. Friction equals circular force. It's still going to be mu mg equals m v squared over r and yeah Jess once again yay masses cancel but now we want to get the v by itself I think it's going to be v equals mu g r square root point seven two five six nine point eight And radius was 72 times 9.8 times 72. So, square root of, for Pete's sake, square root of 512. You get 22.6. Meters per second. Sorry for that yucky mu value. Need applications. One method of generating artificial gravity in outer space would be to build a circular space station and spin it. Yep. Like that picture there. So. If this space station has a radius of 5.2 meters, what does the period of rotation need to be for an astronaut to experience 80% of the Earth's gravitational field? Hmm. You know how I'm going to start this one? 
free body diagram. Now I'm going to say, all right, what are the forces acting on this person? But I can't say get the obvious one. Why can't I say mg? Where are we? The outer space. What path is this person tracing out? So there has to be a force inwards. I got that. Which force? Alex, is this person standing on a surface? Normal force. How big do we want this normal force to be? Well, normally, normal force is mg. But what does this question say? We don't want to quite get all of Earth's gravity. What percentage? Uh, so how about 0 0.8? 80% of mg. <coughs> and now I can go to my equation. The normal force equals what's pushing it in a circle. Normal force is going to be 0.8 mg, and circular force is mass times acceleration. Which acceleration will I use here? The one with the V or the one with the T in it? Carissa. A oh, period. Uh, which is what? My wife's saying check your formula sheet. Some of you need to become familiar with this, so. Yes, thank you for taking your formula sheet out, finally. Andrew. Hey, will this work for a skinny astronaut as well as for a fat astronaut? Cool, because the mass is canceled. Let's get the T by itself. Okay. I think the T would move up to here and the point 0.8 and the G would move down to here. I think we're going to get this. T squared equals 4 pi squared R over point 0.8 G. Except, Rob, how would I get rid of a squared? It's going to be 4 pi squared 5.2 divided by 0.8 g. You get 5.12 seconds. Don't forget square root. Is it, am I right? How could we make it so that the space station didn't have to spin so fast? Bigger radius, bigger space station. Or compromise on how much gravity we wanted. If we want to make 60% of gravity, that would make this number smaller, which would make this number, sorry, that would make this number bigger, which would make this number bigger, which would mean it would take longer to go around once. It's not having to spin so fast. Or We'll have the middle section on a hinge basically staying still, not spinning at all. This is where the spaceships could dock, and this would be zero gravity, which might be helpful for loading and unloading. And then as you slowly make your way down these ladder pathways, as you get further and further away from the center, you would feel more and more and more centripetal force, which would feel to your body like gravity, because you're inside the spaceship. You can't tell that it's you moving. You just feel something like gravity pulling you down. So, 
Suppose the astronaut begins to climb a ladder that leads to the center of the space station. At what radius will the astronaut feel 30% of his weight? I think we're going to start out the same way, Cassidy, in that we're going to say 30% of mg equals my circular force. Thirty percent of mg equals m. Which force equation do you think I want to use now? Well, what are they asking me to find, Alex? Yeah. Oh, there's an r in both of them. What else do I know? I just figured out the period. I think I'll have to use the one with the period in it. This one. Will a little child feel 30% of his weight as well as a big grown-up at this radius? Yep. What did I ask you to find, Alex? Let's get the R by itself. I think this will move to the top. These will move to the bottom. I think R ends up being 0.3 GT squared divided by 4 pi squared. Yes? 0.3 times... 9.8 times my previous answer squared divided by bracket 4 pi squared. And I get when you're 1.95, works out evenly, that's kind of nice. When you're 1.95 meters from the center. Yes? So there's your probably most likely way if we do ever build great big spaceships for people to live on or travel, travel interstellarly. We'll almost certainly just put them into a gentle spin and it gives you a nice actually artificial gravity which reduces the health issues big time because your hearts are always used to having to pump against gravity. If you live in space, your heart muscle, if you live there for about a month, it atrophies, it goes limp and flabby very badly so when you get back to space. A lot of blackouts, a lot of issues for the first six months or so until your heart gets back into shape. This would avoid that. It brings other complications. You have your whole space station revolving, which makes docking a bit more of an issue and a few other things, but still. Oh, the Gravitron. The Gravitron. By the way, Suppose this person held up a ball and dropped it. What would it look like? What would happen? It would go to their feet. Would it fall straight down? And the answer, Spencer, is it depends on your point of reference. I think to the astronaut, it would appear to fall down and land at their feet. In reality, though, which way is this ball moving? What path? Its velocity is that it would fall this way. However, as soon as the astronaut let it go, he's also rotating this way at the same rate as this ball is falling this way, and so he would see it stay the same distance next to his leg, but heading straight downwards to his frame of reference, but it's actually him rotating underneath it. He wouldn't be able to tell also because the air inside the space station is also rotating, so he can't feel a breeze. He doesn't notice that. He has no way of being able to tell. He doesn't know that he's moving. Well, you'd be able to feel it. Can you guys all feel you're moving on the Earth right now? No! 
Our sensation of movement comes from two things. Our bodies have a backwards accelerometer, or if we're at a constant speed, we look for wind on our face. That's how we know we're moving. He would not be able to tell, or she would not be able to tell. Kind of cool. All right. The Gravitron spins its riders around in a circle if the ride has a radius of 4.8 meters and it rotates every two and a half seconds. What's the minimum coefficient of friction required between the riders and the wall of the ride? We need friction in this? I don't know. Let's find out. Hey. What are the forces acting on that person? Get the obvious one. Gravity down. Are they falling down? Are they falling up? Then there must be a matching force this way. I don't know which one it is yet, but I'll draw it the same length. What else? Which path is this person tracing out? So there has to be a net force inwards. I don't know which one yet. Now, by the way, I think that's it. What force is pushing him inwards? I actually heard it over here. Yeah, it's, you know what? That's the surface. It's like we've flipped the ground on its end, or this is like the uh, space station that we just looked at. It's the normal force that's pushing him sideways, inwards. So then, what do you think this is here? friction. And from here we get two equations. Strangely we get friction has to cancel out or equal gravity. See the vertical forces? Horizontally there's only one force pointing towards the middle. Which one, Rob? Apparently that is my centripetal force. Again, notice FC never appeared on here. Oh, but look, 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 look. I don't know another force the same size as a normal force. Hey, friction is what times what? Oh. Oh. What's Fn the same size as? It's open. I can't hear a word you're saying except I heard you giggle at the end, which was great. Uh, yeah, the centripetal force. You know what? I think, I think, I think, I think I can plug that into there. I will get Let's get the mu by itself because that's what this question asked me to find, the minimum coefficient of friction. Alex, how would I get the mu by itself? Yep. Minimum coefficient of friction, if you're designing this ride, Alex, is going to be that. Oh, I don't know FC. Wait a minute. FC is mass times circular acceleration. Let's go there. This is going to be mg all over mass times. Which version of the acceleration am I going to use here? The speed or the period? Oh, do they tell you the period of the question? Every how often? So this is going to be 4 pi squared r over t squared. Hey, I do notice. Yay, mass cancels. That's kind of nice. Real question right now. Some of you are going, what the heck is, don't write this down, don't write down, don't write this down, do not write this down. What the heck is g divided by? 4 pi squared r over t squared. And I say to you, easy. Only this right there. How do you divide by a fraction? Yep, that's one of the e Multiplying fractions is the easiest. Top times top, bottom times bottom. <laughs> Dividing almost as easy. Flip whichever ones are divided. Reciprocal. And now multiply. 
So this is going to be the same as g times t squared over 4 pi squared r. Apparently, mu is equal to g t squared over 4 pi squared r 9.8 year period 2.5 all over 4 pi squared 4.8. What did I forget? Squared. Squared! Point three two three two So there's some applications of horizontal circles. For your homework, you can go back to lesson two and adding to the homework or did I assign all the ones that I wanted to? You can also try number C6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, heck, let's add number 8. So right now it's 1 through 11 and 13. 1 through 11 and 13. 